QuickBooks Online 2023. Recurring transaction, customer email, and payment. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in by going to the tab up top and duplicating it. And then we're going to right click on that duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle, go into the plus drop down. I'm sorry, not the plus drop down. We want to go to the reports down at the bottom and open up the balance sheet report, tabbing to the right, back to the reports on the left, this time the profit and loss or income statement, closing the hamburger, changing the range, 010123, tab 123123, and running it to refreshing it, and tabbing to the middle in it, and then closing the hamburger in it, and then changing the range in it. 010123, tab 123123, tab, running it to refreshing it, and so there we have it so let's go back to the first tab we've been taking a look at these reoccurring transactions we set up a couple last time let's review them we're going to go into the cog drop down up top we go into these recurring transactions i call them reoccurring trans but they're recurring there's no a apparently but in any case we set up two of these we've got the sales receipt we've got the invoice now the sales receipt if we can set that up from our side from the collection side would typically be beneficial to us because if we can uh, legit le legitimately set that up and get the permissions and everything to do so that would be more of an automatic type of system you can imagine basically if you have a subscription type of model to basically pay us kind of automatically that would be great uh, but the other uh, choice would be the invoice which gives more leeway to the a recipient to see how they're going to be setting up their options so we sent both of these out now let's take a look at what the email uh looks like so this is the sales receipt uh email we have the default email that we set up dear j customer please review the sales receipt below we appreciate it very much have a great day and then down below we have the sales receipt and so the payment basically happening uh you know automatically and they also have their attachment here for the sales receipt that they can uh, print out. So that's great. Let's take a look at the invoice. So the invoice take, looks like a normal kind of invoice process, right? So we so so now it's not just an automatic payment. We weren't able to set up basically the automatic payment. So they get the invoice on their side, and then they're going to have to take action like a normal invoice so we have the dear j customer we appreciate your business please find our invoice details here feel free to contact us have a great day and then uh the enter so here's the bill to the interval every month the terms uh net 30 and here's the information on the services and then we have the review and pay here and we also have the review and pay up top so let's go into the review and pay and check that out. So we have their normal kind of setup options that they have. They got the debit, they've got the credit bank account. These are through the payment options that we set up. So we would have to have the recurring payments that we, we set up as well as the QuickBooks payment options uh, to be given them this many payment options like we saw in prior presentations. Let's check out if I go uh, to the credit card, of course, we've got the credit card number, the name, save payment method for faster future payments. So they can sign in and basically save their payment method. And then down here, we have the auto. So it says pay this invoice on time every time and they could set up the auto payment. So if they set up the auto payment, 
then our auto invoices you would think would be similar to the sales receipts in which case they would be paid kind of automatically but you can see it takes that added step on uh the the customer side to to set it up with the invoice as opposed to the sales receipt all right back to quickbooks over here let's take a look at we've received one of these payments on our side so let's go back into the ham buggy and let's go down to uh the sales items and take a look at these are our uh, sales transactions so i'm in the sales transactions and if i scroll down we can see this one this is the sales receipt that we received here with an auto generated sales receipt that it gives us in the memo so if i go into that or click on that it gives us the information on the side sales receipt activity deposited and products and services and so on so that looks good we can then over here on the details duplicate it send it print uh, uh void or delete uh and then we can edit if we edit it, it looks like a normal sales receipt here so we've got j customer so on and so forth it's a sales receipt that means of course that it's increasing the the account that we put it into bank account and then the other side is going to be going to revenue driven by the sales item let's close that out so that looks good so now let's jump over to the invoices tab to the right and you can see here we've got this invoice with this circle up top which is showing that it's the auto you know recurrent recurring reoccurring <laughs> uh invoice that we have there so if I click on it, it gives us our detail on the right viewed uh, three times. So it tracks the viewing of it uh, and so on. So there is that information. Okay, let's go to a quick look on the sales receipts again with this one that we got with the auto generated uh, sales receipt. Remember the normal process we would have uh, is if we process the sales receipt manually jumping over to a quickbooks desktop flowchart just to look at the flowchart normally we would make the sales receipt and we could deposit it directly into the checking account there but sometimes it goes into the clearing account uh, and then we batch it together in order to deposit into the checking account so those payment processors can be an issue for us sometimes because uh the the credit card companies and the paypals and the stripes and whatnot might group multiple sales receipts together and deposit into our bank account as one lump sum but because once again we have the payment processes on it should do that basically automatically for us so that it will deposit it into our uh checking account in the format in the grouping that we need so it so once this is set up it should basically be automatic uh, from that point in time and take care of the deposit and do it in such a fashion that we can line it up to the bank feeds. So if I go into the deposit side of things on uh, the right hand side, we see that we have the deposit deposits from QuickBooks payments. And we have down here, we have our information and there's our sales receipt uh, that was deposited so that looks good and so it's grouping our deposits let's go, and then the net amount uh four dollars and 58 cents let's take a look at it on the checking account here so if i go actually into the checking account drill down on the checking and take a look at it we then have our uh, deposit that pulled through here for the 557 and this is the one that came from the automatic payment i believe so if i drill down on that 117 the 117 hold on that's the actual fee that's the fee that went through let's go into the deposit then the 557 so here's our deposit and it checked all of these off including the sales receipt okay so it picked that one up and it deposited them together so you can see it did that kind of middle step uh, depositing all these items some of them being payments that went from the invoice that was received and then the sales receipt which was so it picked up both of these if i go to the flow chart it picked up uh, the sales receipt that we made as well as the invoices that we received payments on we didn't record the received payment right it kind of did it kind of did the whole process for us and then grouped them together in the one deposit and of course we're hoping and it should be the case that this is the amount that will be shown on the uh 
the bank statement so that we'll be able to do the reconciliation. So if we can get all this set up, if we get these automatic payments set up, then it can be quite nice from the bookkeeping side of things because uh, we, we can kind of eliminate these last two steps. Although again, the downside is the fees. We can make the invoice, we can create the sales receipts. Hopefully we can automate one or both of those things, whichever one we're going to set up. And then we can just let the payments roll and not have to deal with the receive payment or make deposit side of things. And it should be deposited in our system in such a way that we can then match it out to the bank statements in the form of the bank feeds. So then we would go into the bank feeds and we would see this amount uh, coming through on the banking side of things and be able to match that out.